everyone, welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swish and I'm reviewing the Stock Swish Show live trading room year to date for 2022 advanced trader results for the live room. So the room is open Monday through Friday, opens every morning around 9 a.m. and then we trade into the open not before 9.30. We don't do anything in the pre-market. That's when I'm doing the analyzing and figuring out what to do. The room is not open all day. It is usually open about half an hour, hour, depends on how long we're in the trade. But most of the trades are fast and most of the trades are shorts, okay? So with an average risk of $2,800 per trade risk, and we do use stops, I teach us in the class, you could have made so far this year, it is June, 374,500. This is a good start to the year. So we're halfway through the year. We have one more week left in June, or a little bit more than a week left in June. We'll see what happens the rest of the week. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa@thestockswoosh.com. You can always call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So earnings season begins in July. We're at the very end of earnings season. There's some earnings now, like FDX is the end of this week. That could be a big one for us. I don't know if it's a long or short yet, or how it gaps, I will evaluate it after I see the gap. But earnings season is a, great, is a great time to trade my method on golden gaps because you get a lot of gaps, you get big moves, you get volatility, and you just got a lot of things to choose from for quality. And again, the idea and the key as far as an active trader and individual trader is to get a big move. The bigger the move, you take a thousand shares, you get a $5 move you, down to the downside, you short it, you can make $5,000. That's a lot better than getting in and out of something for 10 cents, 25 cents. We don't scalp trades, okay? I'm looking for momentum. We're trading momentum. So summer is actually a good time to trade gaps. When earnings season begins, we get busy. That's July and August. It is time for you to make your dreams come true this year. You don't have, uh, you haven't lost the whole year, okay? You have time. You have time to turn your year around if things aren't going well for you. You have time to turn your trading around this year if things aren't going well for you. I did a lecture the other day. Don't keep doing the same trading strategy that you're doing if it's not working and you're losing this year because you're just gonna, you're just going to um, continue to lose. You have to change what you're doing. So I teach my method. You must take the class in order to join the live room. All right, so everyone that's in the room has done the class, knows how to do the setups, knows how to do the gap rating, knows the targets, knows the entries, knows everything. But the fact that I'm there in the room live actually helps support and assist people. And that actually is very helpful, whether you're a beginner, whether you're new, whether you're doing this for a long time, people like the idea of having the support system there daily. We did this trade last week, this was Target, it was a short. Again, we chunk it out. We're looking for a move, we take it, we get in, we get out. This isn't long-term investing. This is active, active trading. And we focus on fast trades, mostly in the morning. And again, like I said, mostly shorts. So we did the target trade, got in, got out, boom, done. Some trades are five minutes, some are 25 minutes, but quick is quick, okay? We're not sitting at our desk 9.30 to four o'clock. So if you have another job, you're doing things, or you have something to do in the afternoon, this strategy may work out for you. The idea of doing fast trades, trades actually keeps you safe as far as the FOMC minutes and things that go on in the afternoon. You can be done by two o'clock before any of those news events happen. They can be very choppy. And so to get into that quick, you don't even need the market on your side in order to do that. So. The reality is that we've had a good year this year because some things have gone so big this year uh, because we've had so much shelling. And again, we're looking to short. So we started out the year in January, closed on the third. Foot Locker, we did the fourth was break even. No trades on the fifth. If I rate a gap and it doesn't rate my per my criteria, we won't do anything. That's part of being disciplined too. And a lot of people aren't. Netflix was a winner, 5,600. The sixth buy was a huge winner on the seventh. We've had a lot of nice market trades this year, not just in equity trades, but options too. The QQQs profit 14,250 on the 10th. No trades on the 11th. Apple was a break even on the 12th. Then we did Netflix and Facebook, two big ones on January 13th. We've traded Netflix a lot this year too. JPM was a winner, 33.75 of the 14th. Closed the 17th. 
Goldman Sachs was a winner. Spy was a winner. No trades on the 19th. January 20th was AA for a small winner. UAL was a winner. Netflix was a winner on the 21st. And the 24th was the Spy. That was a nice winner too. Apple was a winner on the 25th. Microsoft, the first trade lost. Then we did a retake. Sometimes I'll stay on top of something. And I will take the stop. It's a limit order stop. It's a stop. It hits me out. But then I'll retake it if I still like it and it meets the criteria and sets up. So this was 95.92, which covered the loss from the first stop and then was a profitable day. So we did two Microsofts. MCD was a loser on the 27th. BA was a winner on the 27th. Also, I do teach the retakes in the class too. BA won, nice winner on the 28th. Apple was a winner. UPS, we did two trades. That was, day was a wash. PayPal was a nice winner on February 2nd. I gotta take a look at that chart again. Facebook was a winner on February 3rd. February 4th, we did Ford, big winner, 6,460. BABA was a winner on the 7th. Q's lost. Facebook, big winner on the 8th. I have not done Facebook since it turned into Meta, actually. Apple was a loser. Netflix loser. Small winner in Apple and a break even Netflix. That was a tough day for me. Usually I like to do one thing a day, maybe two, but you can tell when I'm having a hard day myself because I'm doing three, four things. That's like not normal for me, to be honest with you. Like the best days were in and out, one and done, like the BABA. Like four, do it, get in, get out, done. I don't, I'm not gonna trade all day. If I take a good trade in the morning and I'm done, like that's my goal for the day. I made the money, that's it, we're done, you know? And I think that's why you have to look at trading. Your odds go down the more you trade as the day goes on. And also you need the market with you in the afternoon. February 10th, PayPal lost, then a big winner in PayPal and a big winner in the queues on the 10th. UAA was a nice winner on the 11th. Now, if you risk, 3,000, you should be expecting to make per trade three. That's not an exact number, but flip it over one to one. 500, your expectation is 500. 1,000, your expectation is 1,000. So that's how we would have it in your head. Uh, February 14th and 15th, no trades. Nothing met my criteria. So if I don't see anything, I'll do a lecture. You know, we didn't do anything yesterday. So I did a lecture, talked about the market. February 16th, the QQQs was 4,700. Then we did it again on the 17.35.20. The 18th Facebook loss, big winner in the queues. Spy was a loser. The first trade retake worked. That was a good day. Low was a nice one on the 23rd. Spy lost the 24th. Footlocker, nice winner on the 25th. And another BA on February 28th. Then we started March. This little one in BA. March 2nd, FSLR lost. Zoom won. BA was a nice winner on March 3rd. The fourth was BA, another BA, and, and another market trade, 54.90. And again, the market's been pricey. If you want to do an option instead of an equity trade on margin, you could do that because I know the Qs and the SPY have increased in price. The QQQs we did for 93.50 on the 7th. Then on the 8th, we did the Qs twice. Another stop plus the retake, but it all fared out in our favor and it was a profitable day. No trades on the 9th. Then we did BA, which lost, and the SPY on March 10th. Q's was a winner, 73.50. March 11th and 14th off. March 15th, Apple, two stops. And then CVX was a small stop. CVX we did on the 16th, one loser, one winner. Now, when I have an amount in there where it's larger than a $2,800 risk, it's because I did an ad so this was a loss of 7,000 because I did ads in this. That's not something that you have to do. We do not do that on every trade. It is an advanced concept. I'm not gonna detail this right now, but just so you know, that's why that stop was out of the price range, which was more than double because I added to the position size and the trade stopped. Um, so that that's a chance you take because you really don't move the stop when you do that and you're doubling up with the position. I really love that gap, actually, but that just didn't work out there. So that's an explanation for why that loss on that particular day in that one particular ticker symbol was more than in the average of 2,800. Then on the 17th, no trades. FDX was a winner, 3,500. BA lost, and then we did CVX for a nice winner. Then that worked that day, March 21st. Then the 22nd, BA lost, CCL lost, TVX was a winner. 
Adobe was the winner on the 23rd. No trades the 24th. Babel lost. Qs lost. And then a second trade in the Qs that worked on March 25th. No trades on March 28th. AA lost on the 29th. And CVS was a really big trade on March 29th, too. So look when that next earnings are out. Chewy lost. Facebook lost. Spy was a big winner on the 30th. And again, did the ad in Facebook there, just so you know. Then March 31st was WBA, which was a good, solid, quick, fast winner, 2170. Nice winner to start at the month of April. Nice trade, 46.50 in Qs. No trades in the fourth. Twitter lost, CVX lost. BA was a huge winner. Qs was a winner, and CVX lost on the fifth. Now that was kind of an active day there. It was a lot of trades. BA won, and the SPY won, though, on April 6th. Seventh off, Q's was a winner, 29.80 on April 8th. Then in April 11th, two trades again, Q's lost. The second one was a huge winner. We have done the market a lot this year. I, I knew that in my head, but just looking at the days, I mean, we did the market a lot. I'm not saying we're going to do that the rest of the year, but I don't know, we might. There's just been a lot of good gaps in the market. What can I say? JPM was a winner, 53.55 on April 12th. No trades April 13th. Wells Fargo lost. Then we did the QQQs, which is a nice winner, 6,300 on April 14th. April 15th, two trades in the Qs, one stop, one big winner. The 19th Qs lost, J and J lost. Second trade was the retake that worked, and a second trade in the Qs that worked. That was a choppy day. Netflix, boom, nice winner, 6,300 on April 20th, and a nice gap. AA worked on the 21st. 2480. Verizon was a winner, 2720. That's a nice stock to trade. Not too expensive and has big moves. And April 25th, no trades. We did JetBlue for 3500, the 26th. BA for 3630 to the 27th. Cat won 4015 to the 28th. INTC won in 2700 on April 9th. Uh, that was a really good week. Just everything was working beautifully, perfectly fast. Q's lost, then the second Q lost, then a big winner in the Q's on May 2nd. CHGG lost on the third, win one. That was a good gap. Lyft was a winner, and Etsy was 46.80 on the fifth. That was another good week. Spy won 47.40 on May 6th. Then off from the 9th and 10th, 11th, Q's lost, then a big winner. Off the 12th, Twitter lost, CBX won. The Twitter again, then May 16th, which worked much easier, and Walmart, which is a beautiful gap on May 17th, 2550. Target was another beautiful gap, 3115, May 18th. No trades on the 19th. DE was a good one on the 20th, 4900. No trades the trades the 23rd. Again, if I don't have a gap that rates 20 points or more per my 26-point system. And, it, and again, it's either long or short. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do anything. I mean, this is this is about calculated risk. If something rates like 15 points, what's the chances it's going to work? Not high, in my opinion. Therefore, it's a crapshoot. Or you got to get the market with you. And the market can be difficult to read. I do a good job of it, but I don't get the market right every day. I get it right a lot, though. I will say that. But, you, you know, what I'm looking to do in the day trades is in and out fast with the trades that rate good. A low rating... I'm not going to be bothered with it. I just don't feel like the risk to reward is is enough there because you always take a chance when you take a trade that you could lose money. So I need the odds in my favor. It's called calculated risk, and that's the reason I developed the system in the first place. You know, 26 points is a lot of things to look at on a chart. May 24th, ANF loss, Facebook loss, Facebook retake does just didn't work. BA loss on the 25th, CC, CC that's actually not CCX. <laughs> That's another CVX. That's CVX. We've done a lot this year, too. It's not CCX. It's CVX. Sorry. Um, but we've done that. It's it's Chevron. It's oil. And, you know, one of, one of these days, I think that stock's going to blow up just so you know, make another new high again. It, it really took a dive in the last two weeks, I'd say. It did get over 180, but... That, that's on my radar again that's on my radar and i have to look at when those chevron earnings are oil is very volatile to trade but again we do it but just so you know it's cbx no trades on the 26th 27th was w day which lost 
big, which lost. Then we did a second W day that was a really nice winner. Then we did CBX again, <laughs> 31st. In fact, we have time here. I'll pull that chart up just to look at that today. I'm actually interested to see where that's at today. I didn't look at that this morning. Uh, two losses in that on the 31st and the SPY lost. Then we had a nice trade in WMT, 27.90 on June 1st. Microsoft lost on June 2nd. Two trades in HPE. First one small loss, second one nice winner, 44.80. And then Crowd lost on June 3rd. The Apple worked on June 3rd and the Qs for two nice trades. Then was off June 6th through 8th. Spy lost two trades, then a big winner on June 9th. I stayed on top of that day in the market. I was just so determined. June and and and, and again we went, but we went a little bit late. Qs was a winner on 25.95 on the 10th, and the 13th was another nice Qs trade, 25.50. No trades on the 14th, no trades on the 15th. Q's was a winner, 35.10 on the 16th. Spy was a winner, 4,032 on the 16th. Adobe lost, that just flipped, just didn't work because of the market. And then Target was 33.60 on the 17th. So again, every single day I'm getting look up and looking at the gap. I don't know what I'm gonna do until I get up in the morning and see the gap. And I look at it, and there's a reason for that because, again, I'm I'm wanting to get the most qualified thing. Let me just pull up here, CVX. Uh, look at how we tanked here tonight. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, see, this is this is what I'm talking about, where I just said that we that this really had a massive sell off in the last two weeks. So okay, we haven't done anything with this lately, but look. But here's the chart. I mean, I do like this chart. I gotta be honest with you, but right now you just gotta, you actually could have shorted this today. You actually could have done this today um, as a short. We did not, but you could have. But this is on my radar. And I gotta see when the earnings are out on this. But we've, we've done this a lot this year, actually. And I'm gonna continue to get back to looking at that again. Anyways, overall the market this year has been ripe for opportunity. So if you know which direction to trade, you've had a lot of opportunity this year, if you've been able to capitalize on it, which we have. If you are doing something like buying every dip or you don't have a set strategy to do or you need the market for trades, you're having a very tough year. I know people are because they're reaching out to me. Some of them are taking the class this weekend and they're looking forward to learning my strategy. Again, these are all advanced trader risk of an average of $2,800 per trade. These trades are on margin. You put in a stop, it's a limit order stop. So if I say, uh, 10 by 50, that could be, for example, 50 cents. So it's 50 cents times the number of shares. For example, if you had 5,000 shares, your risk could be, what, 2,500 on that. But the cost to take the position will depend on the cost of the stock to take 5,000 shares of something, whether it's a $10 stock, a $20 stock, a $100 stock. So your margin or your buying power is something the broker gives you. You must call a broker. I'm not a broker. I ask these questions, find out. You need charts, you need a platform to trade, you need to be able to short, you need a level two. All of these things you can email me and ask me questions if you would like to know more information or feel free to call. But you can trade with a beginner risk. It is absolutely, absolutely possible. It's just that I understand many people, you know, they all wanna go hog wild right away. You can have great results with a small account. It's not like if you have a small account, you're not gonna have great results. Will you make more money risking more? Yes, but only if you know what to do. So you can have someone that has a lot of money but doesn't know how to trade and lose it all. And you can have someone that has a little bit of money in a small account but knows how to trade and actually does better and makes money. So it has to do with your skill set, with your knowledge. And again, this is the point of taking the class. So you can start with a small account. A lot of people want to do options. That's fine. The, the, the trading room is not an options room. So all of these are equity trades called live in the room. If I say the SPY and you want to buy a put or buy a call on the SPY instead of doing the equity trade because the cost of it, that's up to you. That's totally up to you. You can do that if you want to, okay? So either way, you should know the reason that you're doing the trade. Why are you taking the trade? What is the purpose of you trading? Are you looking to retire soon? Have extra money? I think it's good to have that in the forefront of your mind while you're doing this. So if you're interested in my class, I teach it once a month. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to short each day. 
The class is June 25th and 26th. This is the class you'd want to get in if you want to trade in earnings season, which starts in July, because the next class isn't until the end of July, and half of earnings season will be over. So if you really are interested and want to sign up, you still have till Friday. June 24th is the deadline. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. The combo is $74.99. You would sign up for the Golden Gap course and the Trends class. You would take both classes and save $500, which would be $74.99 for the two classes together. This is a half-day class on Tuesday for Trends. Golden Gap is two full days. If you want to do options and you don't want to do equity trades, the options is not a room. The options is a subscription service. It's an email service. There's no prerequisites. Newsletters are emailed to you. I only have two options, six months and 12 months. There's no one month and there's no trial. So please do not ask me. It's $69.99 for the year and well worth every penny, every penny. $49.99 is the six months. If you want to sign up for this, just email me at melissathestockswish.com. But most importantly, if you want to do the class, if you really want to learn the rating system and how I'm making the gap picks, you would sign up for the class and do it. It's 9 to 5 Eastern time. We get a one hour break for lunch. It's a lot of information. You can ask me questions and it's well worth it. It's well worth it. I mean, it's one of these things where we've been going over the market, explaining it. I've been discussing the market almost every single day in the room. Days we trade, days we don't trade. It's amazing how all of these years of doing this, and since I created my system as long as I've been doing it, how well I've been able to read this market, which a lot of people have found difficult this year. But I've been able to read this market so well because of the way that I read gaps. It's based on technical analysis. It's advanced technical analysis. And again, this is the reason you would take the class. Learning the information is a lot better than just listening to me. You want to be able to know what to do so that you can do it on your own. And I teach it in the class. Any questions, email me at melissathestockswish.com. Have a great day, everyone.